Hello gamers, welcome back to another free to play Ultimate Iron Man progress video. To start off the community highlights, I first want to give a quick GZ to suck on this 4 for 99 crafting. Congrats dude. Next I want to give an absolutely massive GZ to the Scotty on 99 rune crafting. Huge accomplishment dude, congrats. And next, I want to give an absolutely huge GZ to Jambo3547 on being the third free-to-play Iron Man to max. Absolutely huge, dude. Congrats. So, last time we left off, I was doing crafting through the Verat Southwest Silver Tiara method on the way to 99 crafting. Now, I was going for 99 because I was racing a fellow free-to-play UIM in the World 385 clan, Zyafer. Um, mostly because he was going for 99 crafting. I figured it'd be a fun race to do and it'd hopefully get us to, you know, put in some big hours and kind of learn some of the, you know, higher level efficiencies within the crafting method. And so I did that for a while, um, but unfortunately Zypher ended up having some IRL stuff, and because of that, he wasn't really playing much, and so I lost a lot of my motivation to go for it. Especially knowing that I had a lot more melees to do, and I was going to get a lot of zero-time crafting doing that. And so I figured I would cap it off um, at a nice round 96 crafting and from there pursue some other goals. So one of the reasons why I tapped it off at 96 crafting in particular was because I knew it was going to get me my fourth 99 and that is 99 mining which I got with some of the clan mates around. Now this is a pretty cool one it's my first zero time 99 it's going to let me mine silver at the fastest speed in the future and otherwise, it just looks pretty cool, so I'm glad to get it. So with crafting out of the way, I wanted to get a clean inventory so that I could get into some other skills like rune crafting and prayer. And so I figured I would take my law runes up to the wilderness and telegrab nature runes with them. Now, I'm very glad that I conquered my fear of this method because now it's pretty easy, uh, especially with a relatively low uh, law rune stack, to just gear up, grab some anchovy pizzas, run up north, and crank out a few hours of this method. I haven't explored double hopping here yet, just because I'm not sure if double hopping and having two clients to like work with is going to make me less effectively log out if I see a PTAer, or if it's gonna make me mess up if I try to run away or something. So I'm going to stick with single hopping for now, but maybe in the future I'll test out the double hop method here. But yeah, so this is a cool method to do, uh, mostly because it got me 90 magic, which is really nice. It's a nice clean level to leave off at. And with this, I was able to do some superheating and ended up getting 93 smithing from that as well. So just a nice couple levels, nice way to clean out the inventory and get ready for the next goal. So something that I've also started to do as well when I telegrab is I've been trying to just record all my sessions no matter what so that I can showcase what happens if I get attacked by either one or two or more p at a time. And unfortunately, for this whole grind, I had been recording clips like this and I had just not been seeing any p -tayers. And of course, like one Friday morning, I hop on, it's only going to be for like 20 minutes before work, I don't hit record, and of course a three-man team logs in on me. I was able to escape them pretty easily, they only damaged me a little bit to singles, and then they only chased me for a few combat levels, because they were only like 70 combat or something. But still, I'm a little annoyed at myself that the one time I wasn't recording, uh, I did get attacked, so definitely a note for the future, I'm going to try to record so that I can always have some footage of if a few people log in and obviously worst case scenario if I ever get PK'd here. Now 
Yeah, so with the inventory cleaned up, I figured I would get a little bit of rune crafting done. And so that's the method you're seeing right here, which is Chronicle Chenu Earth Rune Crafting. Now this is the this is considered to be the efficient method for free to play Ultimate Iron Man the Train Rune Crafting, unless you do Minotaurs and do uh, Body Chronicle Chenu Rune Crafting there. But yeah, this method's pretty simple. Um, Chronicle Teleport, run to the Essence Mine, run to the Earth Altar, repeat. Um, obviously the efficiencies come from all the smaller things that you can do here. Two tick mining is probably the fastest thing. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is a mining method which essentially takes advantage of the adamant pickaxe's mining speed so that you can roll uh, two different rolls of earth, sorry, rune essence in a four tick time span, which is you know two essence per four ticks or just two tick mining like they call it. And then um, some other minor things, Run Restore, obviously, with the Chinook to Ferret's Enclave. Uh, also taking advantage of the minigame teleport every 20 minutes, which is faster. And then when I do run out of Run Energy, um, which I do every second lap of Rune Crafting, um, taking advantage of Run Strats, which is essentially just using up my Run Energy as soon as I regenerate one, which in the long term is faster than not doing that. I don't know the specifics of that method too much. That's something that Tanner figured out not too long ago. And so, yeah, it's a pretty fun method. Um, it's something I definitely got to get used to because I'm going to be doing it for 3,000 hours or however long <laughs> I have left. I think actually with the EHP updates, I only have like 2,500 hours left of this. So looking forward to that. Yeah, and so with those telegrams out of the way, that sort of brings me into my plans for the future and sort of how I want to structure the rest of this account essentially until I max. So it's generally considered that free to play Iron Man in general, especially free to play Ultimate Iron Man, there are several phases they go through. Um, you know, the first phase is like the early game, you know, doing the questing and stuff like that. The second phase is generally the 99 range at Odris's Grind, which pretty much everybody does these days. And after that is sort of when things kind of get up in the air with what you, whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, Generally, people have 89 smithing at that point, so they can do melees whenever. Um, they have you know, usually a decent amount of resources, so they can jump into really any skill they want. And so what I want to do is I want to start focusing on base total levels as I start to creep up towards max. I'm not as interested in rushing a few 99s as I am just slowly building up my total level and slowly building up my base level especially. It's part of the reason why I went for base 80s and it's part of how I want to do it in the future essentially is I want to go for things like base 85s, base 90s, base 95s, things like that. And so Getting into the next, I guess, overarching goal for my account is base 85s. So I only have four skills that aren't 85 yet. That's attack and defense and prayer and rune crafting. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start to take advantage of, you know, using up my resources as I get them. And I'm going to try the skill hop between those four skills. And so essentially how that's going to look is I'm going to be doing melees at Hill Giants at some point. This is going to be um, probably my main source of melee training for a long time, probably until like 99 strength, 99 attack, and like a decent amount of uh, defense levels. And so I'll be doing kills there, probably in Ultra Rid since that spot's really nice. Um, I'll be doing Obor keys as I get them. I'm not planning on having a big stack of keys. I'm probably only going to be collecting maybe two or five at a time and just cranking out those kills as I go. Essentially, however it's going to plan out is I'm going to be getting enough law runes that I can go telegrab, but not too many that I don't want to telegrab because of how many law runes I have, if that made sense. So kind of like what I was saying earlier, um, somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 law runes is probably what I'm going to shoot for. Uh, the hill giants don't drop that many law runes, definitely a lot less than things like Ordresses. 
and Obor drops a lot, but those tails are pretty infrequent. So we'll see how much SP I end up getting, but what I want to do is get those tails, get, you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand law runes, telegrab with those, superheat those nature runes away, and then every time I have an empty inventory like that, I want to do either a little bit of rune crafting, a little bit of boneyard prayer, or maybe a combination of the two. Um, for example, like taking advantage of the two hour um, hop limit that you'll hit doing Boneyard and then maybe jumping into Rune Crafting after that. I'm still flushing that out. I've been giving both of those methods a little bit of a try, um, including I've started to investigate Double Hop Boneyard. I'm, I'm still a long ways away from being good at that. But that's sort of the plan for right now. Um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is, like you're seeing here, I'm going to do a decent amount of Earth Rune Crafting. Um, these levels are slow and they take a long time, you know, it's the skill that I'm going to be spending 30% of my account or whatever doing this, so I'm getting used to just putting some big hours with this away, and then maybe finishing up combats and then doing prayer after that, or something, we'll see, but yeah, base 85 essentially is the overarching goal, it's what I'm going to be shooting for, and it's probably going to take me the rest of the year, if not longer. I'm not really sure uh, <laughs> how it's going to turn out, but yeah, it's something that I want to do, and it's something I'm going to go for, and I'll be one of the very few free-to-play Ultimate Ironmen that have that base total level, which will be pretty exciting. So before I end off the video, I figured I would show you guys a chart I put together for a free-to-play Ultimate Iron Man to max. Now, this is part of a slower, ongoing effort I'm putting together, um, which is a matching guide in general for free-to-play Ultimate Iron Man. I took a lot of inspiration from Pause's uh, matching guide that he made for free-to-play regs a couple of years ago. It's one of my favorite videos, and it's one of the... Like, that, that video was pretty much the reason how or why I got into free-to-play again. So, I wanted to kind of make something like that. Now this isn't going to be the you know most hyper efficient matching guide. Um, I think you know it's generally you know whatever makes you want to play more, whatever you know gets you to put in hours and yada yada. So this is essentially the matching guide that I think will work with a lot of people. There's still a lot of things I need to figure out. Um, this is still a work in progress. Things like exactly um, how much early game stuff you want to do. You know, like getting your melees up a little higher so that you can telegram earlier, stuff like that. But essentially, this is kind of the general overview. You know, you have the early game where you, you do the quests, complete Dragon Slayer. You know, you get the pretty much the base stats for jumping into Odrises, you know, things like 50 range, 55 magic, 43 crafting. And then a couple other smaller things as well. Then, kind of like what I was saying with like the phases of an Iron Man match, saying you have the range grind, which, you know, I, I sort of like to think of these things as cycles where, you know, obviously you can just rush 99 range and get a huge Law Rune stack, but you're less likely to telegrab if you have a ton of Law Runes you don't want to risk losing. So, it's generally, I think, more, it's it's smarter to not build up such a stat and to use up the law runes and other resources as you get them and so that's kind of why i have like a little bit of a cycle going here with ranging telegrabbing superheating and then you know either back to ranging or maybe doing some crafting as well um generally though um it's one of the notes i have uh down at the bottom um you know try the save crafting for when you have higher mining levels because silver is mining level dependent when iron is not and so, you know, you get about 27.5k law runes from Odrises doing 99 range there. Most of those should go into superheating, the rest should go into crafting. The reason why it's not all superheating is because you just don't quite get enough law runes to get 89 smithing from that grind. You need to do a little bit of crafting so that you can get 89 smithing. And that's important because that way you can make your rune scimitar and then you can jump into melees. So there's pretty much two things you should be killing with melees, hill giants and then odrises. 
Um, you know, Hill Giants mostly because of how much prey EXP they'll give from their big bone drops. And also, you know, with Obor kills, they give a decent amount of law runes. And so, yeah, pretty much goal there is all the law runes you get and all the nature runes you get, you should be superheating with those. Your goal there is uh, 99 strength, 99 attack, 92 defense. That's about where the ratio is for efficient um, hill giants to odrises when going for 99 smithing, which is really what most of your free to play account is going to be about, is just getting the supplies for 99 smithing. And then, yeah, you'll get, at least after the hill giants, you'll get about 95 smithing, I think about halfway to 96. And then the rest that you want to do is going to be back at Odrises, meleeing them. Um, and same deal there. Most of your uh, law runes, or at least a decent chunk of your law runes and all your nature runes, are going to be towards uh, finishing up the last bit of smithing SP you need to get. And then um, about 8,500 of those law runes are going to be finishing up crafting. And so hopefully if you do it this way, uh, you should have you know way more than 99 mining by this point. So you should be able to uh, jump into most of your crafting efficiently. Uh, yeah, and that should you know through silver uh, sorry through silver crafting that should get you the last smithing SP you need. If you did it really well, you could probably figure out 99 smithing and 99 crafting on the same silver inventory. But that's a you know bit <laughs> it's a bit too much. And then obviously through all three of these, um, your goal is to gain a lot of GP as well, because then you're going to be jumping into things like rune crafting and boneyard prayer to finish it up the, those two bid skills. If you do uh, chronicle canoe earth runes, obviously you need to buy a lot of uh, teleport cards for the chronicle, and that can cost a lot of money depending on how much you or rather how you buy teleport cards from Django and Draenor Village. It's, it actually varies wildly depending on how you do it. If you buy like one page at a time and always buy at like the full stock, the minimum cost is around 16 mil GP, which you should get way more than that from. But if you're buying pages like super fast and you're essentially like buy out a world and then world hop, that can cost like almost 40 mil into like almost 50 mil GP, which then you have to manage a bit more with your GP on how you're going to be able to afford that. So I, I put an estimate right in the middle of about 25 mil GP that it would cost you to do that. And then of course, Boneyard is just something that you can do whenever. I, I sort of like the cycle version here of taking advantage of the, the hop limit where you know, you do two hours of Boneyard, hit hop limit, then, you know, you just have the Chronicle and the Axe on you, and then you can just run right back down and start rune crafting after that. Uh, or, you know, if you're more efficient, you can just do all your um, prayer and then all your rune crafting. And then I put fishing and cooking and fire making uh, along the outside there just because those are two things that you can do really whenever you want um generally though uh you should try to save 99 cooking for after your combats and after your telegrabbing just because you know if you do like 1000 law rune at a time um telegrabbing you'll make a lot of anchovy pizzas and that's a decent amount of cooking xp and also, if you melee odrises in the spot where the raw tuna is, you can get a lot of cooking XP there just passively. So try not to finish those until afterwards. And then, you know, once you do get into fishing, if you're doing something like eerie fishing, which is the efficient way to go, then you're going to be making a lot of your own fires and you're going to be cutting a lot of your own logs to do that. So generally, yeah, don't get wood cutting done and or don't get fire making done until after that and then really you only need to get 99 fire making because you will cut enough canoes during rune crafting that you will just passively get 99 wood cutting it's technically zero time this way but you know it's not officially zero time just because you know officially minotaurs are a little faster and you're not doing as much uh, wood cutting there 
but yeah, it's just kind of like a fun little guide I'm putting together. Um, I think it's kind of cool to really look into um, like how to match for a lot of people, and I definitely do want to make a guide at some point that really goes into all this. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, I think I'm going to end it off here. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone, really, and I will see you all next time.